Hey guys, Ryan here. And in today's video, I want to explain why people need to learn to find their own settings because a lot of content creators are going to quote unquote lie to you. And no, I don't mean they're actually lying to you on purpose, but a lot of the settings that you see in a lot of popular videos might not actually be the best for you as an individual. And that's the whole point of this video. I think a prime example of this is the field of view setting. In Warzone, pretty much every video I looked at recommended a high field of view. And the counterpoint I have to this is, why is it in Counter-Strike Global Offensive, one of the most popular FPS games, a game that's focused on good aim and positioning, why is it many people prefer playing on a lower field of view because it makes their targets bigger and easier to hit on their screen? Now, first things first, I automatically understand a lot of you are probably saying, well, that's a completely different game. Why are you comparing Call of Duty to Counter-Strike? And that's because in this game, it's a lot more like Counter-Strike than it was Warzone 1. In Warzone 1, with how crazy movement was, you honestly needed a pretty high field of view. And I'm not saying you should use a low field of view. What I'm saying is, if you think that using something like 100 field of view, 105, 110 field of view is a bad thing, then you're sorely mistaken and you're being misled by a ton of different content creators who are suggesting to use things like 115, 120. It is ironic, I am on 115 field of view myself, but that's just because I love to use movement. I'm a very aggressive player and I'm in a lot of close range gunfights. If you're not in a lot of close range gunfights, then you don't want a field of view around 115 because that's gonna make your opponents at range harder to hit. And actually, this exact same thing applies to sensitivity. If you're someone who's very aggressive, you play a lot with SMGs and you get in people's faces, then you probably want to use a little higher sensitivity than someone who primarily snipes at long ranges and plays laid back and likes to take fights at long range. If that's you, then you probably want a lower sensitivity because the further away someone is on your screen, that means the less you have to move your joystick to hit them. So if you have a high sensitivity, that means it's usually pretty hard to hit someone at range. But if you have a lower sensitivity because they're that further away, it's actually pretty easy to hit them at range. And these are the things people don't understand. If you're an aggressive player and you're always in people's faces, you want a field of view that's going to show a lot of things to you and you probably want a little higher sensitivity than a lot of people would recommend. The reason for this is because you need to be able to see people and you need to have a sensitivity that's fast enough to flick onto people that appear on your screen. I think overall the main point I'm trying to get across is the whole key and what you're really trying to look for is find the best settings for your play style and for you as an individual. And this is the thing a lot of people get wrong. They copy some person's class, they see some fancy YouTube video with some huge clickbait thumbnail, you know, very similar to the one I do and whatnot. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing and I'm not saying they're bad videos, they're not. What happens is you copy these settings and it's for a player who has a much different play style than you. So rather than actually having the best settings for you, you actually copied someone's settings who it's just not suited for you. So those settings aren't gonna be good and it ends up being detrimental and it doesn't make you a better player. And this is why a lot of times you have to be careful. If you look at my settings, I would never recommend my sensitivity for the vast majority of players. I play on 1414 sensitivity with 0.9 ADS sense. And this is something I would not recommend for a lot of people. However, for me, because I can control it and it really doesn't affect me, it gives me advantage having this fast of a sensitivity because I can lock on the targets, I can snap to people quicker, and it's just overall something that I'm used to because I have a lot of skill. I have pretty much a 4KD right now. Of course, I'm able to have a higher sensitivity than someone who has a 1.5KD. I really also mentioned this a lot in the last video I did about this when talking about attachments, but I really just think the main thing I'm trying to get across is you need to learn to actually understand the settings, the build for guns to their core, if you really want to actually have a decent bit more fun in your games. I'm not saying you have to, but I do try to in my videos more inform people why I'm recommending these settings and more explaining the settings because you should feel free to mess with the settings as you feel fit. And the same thing goes for my weapon builds. If I give you a build and I'm a super aggressive player and you say, 
why would I use something that has this much movement speed when I'm never pushing people? Why would I not have something that has more recoil control when I can barely control the recoil and where for me, it's not an issue. And that's where you have to realize when you watch a video of some dude who has a 4.5 KD and they're dropping a 30 bomb on a Sheikah Island resurgence and they're going crazy, maybe you should exercise a little caution and when you try the build out, make sure you understand if the build's gonna be good for you and your play style. And maybe the gun is super good, but maybe that build isn't good because it doesn't match you in your play style and it doesn't match the way you would need a gun being built. And these are the things I wish I could get across to people, guys. When you watch a video like mine, like the very one you're watching, there's no actually objective truth to all of this. Someone can tell you this gun has the fastest time to kill in the entire game. And then the truth is, is you have to hit two headshots to get that time to kill. And realistically, you aren't doing that in a lot of your gunfights. So why are they even telling you that? And I'm not saying this is every video. I'm not saying this is something that happens all the time, but you have to be careful. A lot of people are misled in these videos and super unfortunate. But overall, it's not even really that big a video. This video is just more than meant as like a little helpful tip to help you understand really what you should be doing and looking for in these settings videos. Try and understand more the reason for the settings. Understand different things. Maybe you should be using a faster sensitivity. Maybe you should be using a lower sensitivity with the lower field of view. Maybe you should try vibration on or vibration off, whatever. There's a whole litany and a whole giant list of things you could change and try, but make sure you're doing these changes for the right reasons. Anyways, guys, it's been Ryan. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you have a good day and overall, Thank you for just supporting this channel in general. If you like this content, maybe like, maybe subscribe, but you know, you don't have to. Once again, thank you for watching. Have a good day. Peace.